stanza 11 himself he propped limbs body and pale face upon a long gray staff of shaven wood and still as i drew near with gentle pace upon the margin of that moorish flood motionless as a cloud the old man stood that heareth not the loud winds when they call and moveth all to gather if it move at all the leech gatherer stands supporting his old body with a long stick of shaven wood the speaker gently moves towards the old man they are standing near a water body in the moor now we meet with the cloud simile wordsworth was a great fan of cloud similes and he opens his famous poem daffodils with a line i wandered lonely as a cloud in the present poem a comparison is built between the leech gatherer and the cloud the leech gatherer refuses to move he is motionless he is still he is like a cloud which refuses to move even when the winds put pressure on it to move stanza 12 at length himself unsettling he the pond stirred with a staff and fixedly did look upon the muddy water which he conned as if he had been reading in a book and now a stranger's privilege i took and drawing to his side to him did say this morning gives us promise of a glorious day the leech gatherer who had been motionless for quite some time now stirs the water of the pond with his staff and searches for leeches in the pond he examines the water of the pond with such great concentration that it would appear that he is reading a book the speaker tries to start a conversation with the leech gatherer by telling the leech gatherer that the morning gives us promise of a glorious day the topic of weather is a classic english or classic british opening gambit for conversations whenever an englishman wants to start a conversation with a stranger he usually makes a comment about the weather this is precisely what the speaker has done here there is one more point which i would like to make the central figure of resolution and independence is 
needless to say, the leech gatherer. The old poverty stricken man, probably not far from death, leading a rather miserable existence. One of the great achievements of the Romantic Revival was to populate poetry with ordinary men and women. Poetry which in the neoclassical period had revolved around lords and ladies now started discussing very ordinary men and women. I would like to establish a contrast between the Baron who is a central figure in the Rape of the Lock of Alexander Pope and the Leech Gatherer who is the central figure of resolution and independence. The long distance between the two points, the long distance from the Baron to the leech carrier is indicative of the long journey taken by English poetry from the neoclassical period to the Romantic period. Stanza 13 A gentle answer did the old man make in courteous speech which forth he slowly drew and him with further words I thus bespake what occupation do you dare pursue? This is a lonesome place for one like you. Er, uh, he replied, a flash of mild surprise broke from the sable orbs of his yet vivid eyes. The leech gatherer is ready to engage himself in a conversation with the poet and he gives the poet a polite and courteous reply. The poet decides to take the conversation further and asks the old man about his occupation. The leech collector is mildly surprised that somebody should take an interest in him and his occupation. But the conversation has begun. Stanza 14 His words came feebly from a feeble chest but each in solemn order followed each with something of a lofty utterance dressed choice word and measured phrase above the reach of ordinary men a stately speech such as grave livers do in scotland use religious men who give to god and man their dues. Quite understandably, the leech gatherer speaks in a very weak voice. In fact, it appears that he has hardly any strength to speak effectively. However, his language is extremely impressive. 
His diction is carefully chosen. There is something elevated about his register, about his dialect, about his idiolect. The poet observes that such an idiolect is certainly beyond the reach of ordinary men. The poet calls it a stately speech. And the poet works out a comparison between the idiolect of the leech gatherer and the language used by the grave livers of Scotland. They are religious men who lead pious lives. Stanza 15 He told that to these waters he had come to gather leeches, being old and poor, employment hazardous and wearisome, and he had many hardships to endure. From pond to pond he roamed, from moor to moor, housing with God's good help by choice or chance, and in this way he gained and honest maintenance. Through his conversation, the leech gatherer revealed the details of his life. He was old and poor, and he moved from pond to pond, and from moor to moor, searching for leeches. He was homeless, and there was a shelter, there was a roof over his head, only when God gave it to him. There is no doubt that the leech gatherer leads a life of deprivation and suffering. But it is also true that the leech gatherer makes an honest living through his own hard work.